What's up, folks? Welcome to the Match and Germ Whiskey Room. I am Jason C, and we are live right here, right now, on a Whiskey Wednesday night. Thank you uh, for coming in tonight, hanging out. My very special guest right here is the one and only Jim Canepa, superintendent of uh, Ohio State. What's your full title? It's long. Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort. <laughs> Superintendent of the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. So, um, how you doing, Jen? Thanks for coming in. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Love your show, man. Thanks, appreciate it. Are you, uh, you, uh, are you, are you a little scared of the crowd, or are you all right? No, um, I, I've, <laughs> I've had this vlogging before. <laughs> I'm here to. I'm here to help. You're here to help. I'm here to. I'm here okay. to educate. I'm here, here to educate. <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's see here. Um. <laughs> we already have a bunch of people in the chat. Uh, let me say hi to, let's see here. You had, we had a lot of early uh, folks coming in the chat here. I want to say hi to Cheech Arlino, Mike Franklin, uh, Brian Slapshot Nicholson. What's going on, man? Chris Buzalencia, Donald Rance in the house, the Irish Whiskey Yoda's in here, uh, Karen B. Ford, Bourbon, Brett Marquette, um, Ryan Tarpey, Jeffrey Wack. What's up, guys? Thanks for coming in. Uh, hanging out tonight. So tonight what we're going to do is, uh, so I wanted to bring Jim on because I want to like being like close to the blast radius, apparently. Uh, yeah. I, I like to take, I'll take the heat you along take, with you a little okay. bit. Uh, but basically it's, it's, I want to learn more about state control liquor agencies versus uh, non-state liquor control agencies. Being someone that lives in Ohio, bourbon hunts in Ohio, looks for bottles in Ohio. Um, I hear a lot of complaining <laughs> all around about the website, about different aspects of it, but I also hear a lot of positives as well. So I definitely wanted to kind of get into it and maybe it might be a really good, uh, good learning experience for you guys as well uh, to kind of learn the ins and outs of how a state liquor agency works, uh, what it takes to bring a brand in, um, state picks. Uh, Jim has some really cool news about some of the state picks uh, that, that they're working on and also uh, also, other states that might want to model it after what Ohio is doing as well. So there's a lot of positives there. But for those of you, you know, for those of them that don't know you, just uh, want to do a quick introduction. Jim Canapa, uh, I'm the superintendent of the Division of Liquor. I uh, I'm a lawyer by trade. Actually, I used to do uh, cold case homicides for a lot of years, and um, got sort of voluntold uh, to get involved with the the liquor division back in 17 when we were transitioning over to a new inventory database <clears throat> and so you know one of the things i'm i'm good at is process improvement uh you know that kind of thing and so you know I, it was supposed to be a six-week gig and i'm still there so you went for a six-week gig until yeah. till, well so you started in what year 17 2017 so i moved here in 2016 uh, and just from those years that I lived here, the bourbon market has completely been you. So oh, it's crazy now. Yeah. So you kind of came in at a time when bourbon, I mean, you came in when bourbon was popular. It was like just the front like of just the wave, the, just the front end there front of the wave. And now, now everyone and their mother is in into bourbon. So you've kind of had to navigate not only the beginning when you came in and what was available, what wasn't available in the state. What you want it to bring in to now what it is now, which is probably one of the nuts, which is, yeah, which is nuts, as you can it, attest it, to. It, it, it's, it, you know, no, yeah. it's nuts. When I came in, you know, I was a bourbon <clears throat> fan too. Yeah. All my friends were, were <clears throat> bourbon fans. And so, you know, they, they, they put me in, in this role and I was, you know, like kind of seeing what was happening with the bur bourbon trends. But it, you know, it went from, you know, you know, being able to grab McKenna as a daily drinker or, a, a, you know, a Blanton's as a daily drinker to, you know, people chasing. I've said this before. It's like a beanie baby, beanie baby craze. Yeah. It's like everybody is they don't even know what what it is or what it tastes like. They just want that bottle. Yeah. And they want to, you know, stand in line and they want to chase after it and they want to, you know, elbow people in, the, people in the eye to grab it and it's, just, <laughs> and it's or, or sit sit in a parking lot next to a dumpster in a in a lawn chair and wait for the trucks to, to roll up so it yeah. is it, it but it's not just here it, it's it's everywhere yeah it's everywhere it's everywhere so 
So there are the differences now. So what, what we want to get into is the differences here between what we have in a state control agency versus a non-state control. So kind of tell us some of the main points of the biggest differences okay. that you found, you know, since you've, uh, you know, since you got into your position in 2016. So really the main difference is where the money goes. I mean, so, so in a, in a control state, from the sales of high proof spirits um and, and in some states like pennsylvania it's all alcohol but in ohio it's 42 and up those the revenue goes to um the state to jobs ohio for economic development in an open state you've got you know ten thousand retailers who sell beer sell wine sell seltzer and a subset of that also have spirits like Indiana, uh, New York, California, Florida. Okay. And so each one of those retailers in an open state is vying com in competition with each other to get spirits, you know? So for the commodity stuff, like, you know, vodka, gin, rum, uh, the commodity, the, vol the high volume, high volume, high volume stuff. stuff where, you know, you don't have an aging process. You don't have a blue agave. You don't have something from France that has specs. <sighs> um, you know, it's fairly straightforward. You can fill the shelves with the vodka, the rum, the gin, whatever. But when it comes to allocated, those retailers are in competition with each other. Yeah. And so um, and each one of them makes takes the risk in buying that inventory you know so they whether it's you know a wine uh, uh, inventory or beef jerky inventory or a vodka or bourbon or they own that inventory and so they're they're taking the money out of their pocket they're taking the risk on those sales whether it moves or doesn't move and they're in competition with those other retailers to get stuff from the suppliers in a in a state like Ohio, we're like the biggest chain retailer ever. So if like Benny's out of Chicago, okay, was statewide, he they would be a statewide retailer. But the difference is Ohio is the retailer. Ohio is the one who buys the inventory, and the retailers here are selling it on consignment for a commission. So. The Giant Eagles, the Krogers, the uh, um, Arrows, the Chateaus, the uh, Josephs up in Toledo. Uh, they are retailers, but the, the spirits that are on the shelves are owned by, by, Ohio. by Ohio and sold on consignment for a commission. And so that uh, so the other big difference, the main difference is price. You know, if you and. and if you go to Indiana across the border or you go to Illinois or you go to New York, Florida, um, Texas, and you're looking for, you know, vodka, if you're looking for Tito's, if you're looking for, um, you know, Appleton rum, if you're looking for, you're going to find it. it. It's in Ohio. It's everywhere because there's not a whole lot of specs to it. There's not aging. There's not, like I said, blue agave. There's not, you know, something from uh, France. But when it comes to, you know, the allocated stuff, mm -hmm. there is really the big difference. Um, you know, those retailers are going to struggle uh, to get that kind of stuff. In Ohio, we have buying power. And so when I go to Makers or I go to Sazerac or I go to Heaven Hill or I go to Wild Turkey, I'm like the gorilla in the room they it's a one-stop shop it's retailing across the state of ohio and think about it from a business perspective the cost for those suppliers to market and have a sales team in a state like ohio where it's a one-stop shop versus like florida or new york or california where they have to have a sales team like literally go door to door to door to door to retailers so the cost there and the cost here make this a marketplace where they want to where they want to put their products. And does that help drive down the prices or keep the prices close to what, retail? What it does is it, it gives me a good price that they're selling it to me, but 
we also have the same price, whether it's in Marietta or Toledo. Wherever you go in Ohio, that price is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. But but in across the border in Indiana or New York or California, that retailer, if he's got a bottle of Blanton's or he's got a bottle of something highly allocated, and I get this question all the time. It's like, I was in Indiana or I was in Oregon or I was in Texas and I saw they got Blanton's. I'm like, yeah, what was the price on it? Well, it was you know two hundred dollars. I'm like, why'd you buy it? <laughs> well, because it's fifty five dollars in Ohio. Well, so that's the price is a big difference because that retailer, he owns that inventory, he's going to put that price on that bottle where you're going to that customer is going to come in and get the wallet out or not get the wallet out and maybe pass on it and see it there, but there may be three bottles that sit there for months until somebody pays $200 for it. Yeah. Here it's the same it's the same price and so consequently it flies off the shelf. It flies off the shelf. So price is a big difference, selection another big difference. So, well, let's let's talk about that. What does it take to bring a product into Ohio, a brand? Now you now let's get into a little bit too of uh, everyone, you know, people that hunt bourbon they're, you know. Oh, by the way, guys, we're going to Jim and I set up a blind tasting for ourselves. So I gave him a three blind, a three glass blind tasting, and he brought some stuff in a secret box that I'm going to get to a blind taste as well. So we'll do that a little bit later as we're sipping along. Um, Listings. Yeah. How, so, how does a product get into? Ohio? So how does a product get into Ohio? And how did how did Ohio become the land of Weller? Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, so it's pretty straightforward. There are really two categories of spirits in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty much two categories of spirits uh, across the world. There's bourbon mm -hmm. and everything else in terms of products. Yeah. And so if it's bourbon, and now tequila's kind of catching up to it, actually, um, in terms of allocations. And bourbon, because of the... Uh, the nature of aging because of the limited quantities, because that pie has to serve the world. Um, it's I'm like a, a, a whiskey gypsy. It's if there's bourbon, we want it here. Okay. And so I'm, I am uh, cajoling, begging, twisting arms. I'm visiting the distilleries. I'm calling the distilleries and there is no thumbs up, thumbs down on bourbon. Well, you know, if it's pickle flavored bourbon, it's probably thumbs down. Yeah. Good. But good call, man. But the, but there's no thumbs. There's nobody in a, you know, a robe with candles lit with a black ball that rolls down to, you know, say no to, to bourbon. We try to get all the bourbon we can buy and we try to establish relationships with the people who have it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then there's everything else. All those commodity flat demand you know so scotch is flat rum is flat gin is flat vodka is flat bourbon and tequila the demand is off the charts and so it's a matter of does the supplier want to bring it to ohio and can i convince the supplier to bring it in ohio and you know will it is an example of that ogd 114 is a, a an example of that blade and bow is an example of yeah that. how is ogd not in ohio for so long it, <laughs> it it it's like you really have to you know you really have to press the so suppliers. so I, I do want to address this question because you brought up scotch uh i have a good buddy of mine dustin he has a channel um he obviously he, he you know he can't stand the plans people but real people don't care about plans or well or Okay, Dustin, we want spring bank, which we don't get in Ohio, period. So there seems to be kind of a, um, you go to most stores, there's not a really a big scotch uh, selection when you compare it to other states. Is there a reason for that? Is there data behind that? What's the reason? So, no, really, it's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so scotch demand is yeah. flat. If you owned a business, if you owned, if you were in the spirit selling business, what are you going to put on your shelves? Stuff that sits there. You've just, you know, you're cracking out the dough out of your, out of your budget. Mm -hmm. What are you going to put on your shelves? Jason, what are you going to put on your shelves? As far as scotch wise? No, uh, any product. 
Oh, well, yeah, I mean, bourbon stuff mostly. That, stuff that people stuff buy. That people buy. Yeah. Right. Why? Because you are, your inventory is tying up your cash. And so what are you going to put on there? Stuff? Yeah. Okay. You know why? Uh, I love liver and onions. But you know how many restaurants you can get liver and onions? You know what? Like Not two, a lot like of them. Like two. Why? Because, <laughs> because somebody's got to want it. And so scotch demand is flat. Mm -hmm. And so uh, whether it's out of state or this state, uh, there are agencies around Ohio, and there's 489 of them, where there's a real strong scotch clientele. That's where the scotch is. If you know, you go down to if you go to New Lexington, Ohio, high end scotches at the Kroger, you're not going to find them. Mm -hmm. But if you go down to uh, uh, Bethel Road uh, to the, the liquor agency there, they've got a huge scotch selection. Yeah. Um, but having said all that, if there's any brand of scotch that people are interested in, and you know that the the and if I can get the supplier's uh, ear and buy it, I'm bringing it in because there's always going to be a market. It may not be in every agency, but it it'll be in 50 or 100 of the 490. And Scotch is coming back, so it's really a matter of like who who has it, what brands we can sell, and who will sell it to me. Yeah, I mean when it comes to Scotch, like what I see. Um... Oh, yeah, and Dustin's kind of alluding to it as well. Ohio doesn't really have a, a lot of the popular scotch products I think that people are demanding now. You have a lot of the, um, you know, the go-tos. Like you have your Glenfiddich, you have your Glen, uh, you know, you have a Glendronic 12. It would be great to get a Glendronic. Well, you did bring in Glendronic 15 Revival mm -hmm. you know, recently. Um, but, yeah, you know, brands like Springbank and Hazelburn, um, you know, some of those other kind of the popular brands might be good to look at. So, but remember, remember. It's a business, yeah, right. It's not government cheese, right? Yeah, you yeah. have to be able to sell the product, sell the product, yeah. And so, now um, are there are there certain parts of Ohio that sell more scotch than yes, others that you see? Absolutely. And is that the areas that get the and more? That mostly is the and scotch. That's, that's why I, that's why we're not afraid to buy scotch. We're not afraid to buy rum because rum is on. We're not afraid afraid to buy Irish whiskey. Now, if you come to me with like Fruit Loop vodka. Or cilantro vodka, I'm going to say no. But on the whiskeys, there's always going to be a market for it. It's just a matter of like what what is the brand, who is the supplier, and do they have supply and inventory to sell? Because at the end of the day, the suppliers have existing market customers, mm -hmm. and if it's allocated, like if there's somebody who wants something allocated. Those customer, those suppliers are going to have to take away from somebody to give to me. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm absolutely in the game to, to make that case and make that argument. Okay. So there you go. Oh yeah, no cilantro vodka. Wade Ward is like upset. Terrible. Um, Donovan is saying OHLQ needs to help small Ohio distilleries. So, we love Ohio distilleries. In fact, yesterday, I was with uh, Echo. Um, Watershed, High Bank, and uh, Middle West. Okay. They're doing a co collab, collaboration. Collaboration blend. Blend. Mm -hmm. um, and we've already bought all of it. And they're going to do a festival. And 450 people have already bought all the tickets. And there's 600 bottles. And it's going to go like crazy. Yeah. And so it's probably going to go so fast that we're probably going to lottery some of it. Yeah, lot. Okay. So, but right. but love Ohio distilleries. Love the bourbon that they're making, and <clears throat> you know, I'll buy, I'll buy all of it that they have. So, um, so getting into getting into lottery. Uh, why do we have a lottery? Well, I mean, yeah, we know why we have a lottery. Why? Why do we have a lottery? <laughs> you tell me. Well. I would imagine, uh, you know, the demand is so high on some of these bottles, you kind of have to put in a lottery. Well, um, I know that people will complain. They already complain about Blanton's constantly. Like, I can't I can't get a bottle of Blanton's. So I'll tell you what, though. Give the numbers on the amount of Blanton's that Ohio gets versus that it used to get. You gave me a case count. So, so for anyone complaining that they can't get Blanton's out there, which I saw a few people in the chat already complaining, 
So, well, so, so the, the you, one of your questions was, what's the biggest complaint that I get? Yeah. What's the biggest complaint you get? Why can't I find Blanton's? <laughs> So in eighteen we That's pretty sad that that's the biggest complaint yeah, you get, but in, I get in, it. In eighteen get it. in eighteen we, we got uh two thousand eighteen, thirty three hundred cases for the whole state. Thirty three hundred cases for the entire state. Yeah. And that was for the whole year? For the year. For the year. All right. Twenty one, uh seven thousand two hundred cases. Seven thousand two hundred cases. Okay. Okay. Buffalo Trace, eighteen. Forty one hundred bottles. Mm hmm Or cases. Cases. Uh, 2021, 7,400 cases. And Weller, 18, 2,100 cases. Today, 23,000 cases. So the reason we have a lottery is because when I came in, we didn't, ha uh, we didn't have Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, Sazerac cut us off. And so, you know, all my bourbon nut friends were like, you got to get the pappy tap turned back on. And so I'm at a, at a booze conference and I run into, you know, all the distillers are there. Uh, Heaven Hill, Sazerac, Beam Centauri, all of them. And I go to a, I go to the Sazerac cabana and I meet a guy named Mark Brown, who's the CEO of Buffalo Trace. Okay. He's like, hey, he's an English guy. He's like, hey, hey, Jim, how can I help you? And I'm like, how do I get the pappy tap turned back on? How do I get the spigot turned back on? And he's like, sell it fairly. And I'm like, all right, what do you, what do you, what should I do? And he's like, do a lottery. And so we do a lottery because regular people can get it. He said, and I said, well, what was the problem? And, he, and he's like, well, pappy comes in, the allocated comes in and VIPs get the allocated bourbon. And he goes, that does nothing for my market share. He goes, I want regular people to get the products. I don't want, you know, the store owner, the store owner's, owner's neighbor, VIPs, you know. And so that made a lot of people mad because a lot of people had their hookup. But my job is to make the supplier happy. And if I can make Mark Brown and Sazerac happy and Beam Centauri happy and Heaven Hill happy and Willet happy and all the distilleries happy, we get more. Yeah. And so. So it's a, it's, you know, it's a tricky game you got to play. It's a relation. It's a, yeah, it's a relationship a, building. It, it, you have to build a relationship. Yeah. And, you know, so today we get, you know, we're phone friends. He calls me up. Hey, I got a limited amount of X. Do you want it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Heaven Hill, do you, limited amount of X. Do you want it? Yes. And you know that's and, and and that's what what it's about, um, and that's how Weller, that's how Weller came back into the so, scene. so you build a relationship with Sazerac. Uh, Mark Brown calls me on the phone and he says, "Hey, it's between you and another state, which I won't mention because you have followers in other states, and <laughs> um, to take Weller off of allocation." between you and another state. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the catch? He goes, well, it's gotta be in 150 agencies that we Sazerac choose. And again, remember, they have the, the sales data, same as we have the sales data, what agencies sell their competitors brands, like Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark is the beast in the market. Sazerac Weller wants to compete with Maker's Mark. And so they have a strategy and I'm like, absolutely, whatever you want. And so that's what happened. And so this experiment, this was an experiment. It, came, it comes to Ohio and we still have not found the ceiling on demand for Weller, for Weller. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, even everywhere I go, it'll come in, it still sells out instantly. Mm -hmm. So, now, so they can't, so it's their mission to find that ceiling. And yeah. so they're actually taking it from other markets and bringing mm -hmm. it to Ohio to see if we can find what that threshold is. Yeah. So so let's let's get into the lotteries now, which a lot of people are already talking about in the chat. Um, oh yeah, I can't win it. I can't win. It's rigged. Why you is here? It's rigged. Why, why is the same people? Why is Bill L winning every single 
lottery. Is it possible that of the 100,000 people who sign up, there are maybe more than one Bill L? Well, I know, for fa- that. I know for a fact there's another Jason C <laughs> that wins every fucking time, and it's not me. <laughs> I, you know, so, it, um, so, it's, so it's an algorithm yeah, and it's computer drawn. Okay. And there's a hundred thousand people that join. And so it picks out. Now, now lot, and then lot, lottery's in the beginning when you first started, it was kind of more towards the end of every year. You had kind of this big blowout lottery. The it started Weller, with the Pappy. Weller, yeah. The letter, the, the Weller 12s, the Pappy, the BTAC, um, Old Forester, birthday bourbon, all right. that stuff. Right. Now, now, as the last couple of years, we've kind of dripped uh, in some, like we just had a lottery here in Ohio to win a Weller CYPB. What was it? Single uh, barrel. Full proof. Else? Yeah, the full, full proof. proof. Uh, was it Elmer T. Lee was on um, this too? Was Elmer on there? Yeah. I, if, I think Elmer was on maybe. there too. So so how did the lottery system expand and um, why? Why? how did some of those bottles end up in lottery and why? Because you get, you know, back to the complaint, right? Mm-hmm. Like, why can't I find Blanton's? Why can't I find... So Blanton's, there's lots of cases out there. Weller, there's lots of cases out there. But if uh, Elmer T. Lee comes in and it's, you know, a couple hundred cases, the ones that are limited uh, numbers, it's still the case, back to Mark Brown's point, it's still the case that they come in and people have their hookup. What do you call them, taters? Yeah. Right? People got their hookup. And they go and they buy it, and regular people don't get a chance to get it. To get it, and I've actually had people complain that about the lottery. That oh my god, look at all the women winning the lottery because apparently, well yeah, people guys are mad. Get, guys get their wives or their guys are mad because women are drinking their bourbon. Mm-hmm. Now come on, that's ridiculous. Well, they're probably winning it for their husbands. What, whatever, and maybe giving it whatever. It whatever is. it is, but that's, I would rather yeah. I would rather have, uh, you know, a hundred non bourbon fans win it in a lottery than a hundred people who are going to buy it and flip it. Yeah, and so it expanded to make it uh, available uh, and accessible to people who want to try this stuff and who never ever. I've had people tell me I've never had. Uh, an Elmer until the lottery. I've never had a birthday bourbon until the lottery. I've never had, I would never have a chance. And those, those are the people that I'm trying to please. I'm not trying to please, you know, these club guys who think all the barrels should go to their club or all the allocated should go to them. That, that, that's not my customer base. Yeah. You know, my customer base is all of Ohio. It's not, a select few who can get up at five in the morning, stand in line and browbeat an agency for allocated stuff so that they can go flip it. Well, that's the other thing I think I was going to bring up. You got a lot of these guys that probably want to get their hands on it to do flipping because um, mm-hmm. they know they're going to get it here at MSRP and then they can flip it. That's right. Easily. Uh, but Which on top is why of- it flies right off the shelf. Yeah. Right. Why can't I find Blanton's? Because it comes in, and flies off the shelf. Yeah. And hopefully people are drinking it and not flipping it. Uh, well, I'm not going to it's, it's, it. it's sad. Yeah. It's sad is what it is. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, when it comes to, I know, I know more women now that are drinking, mm-hmm. you know, bourbon in and around Ohio than ever before. They love, they love it. This, so at the end of the day, I, I think the whole woman argument is yeah, at the end bit, of the, at the end of the day, this is a business. Yeah. And the customers are who the customers are. And if it's booming because of millennials or booming because women are uh, are trying bourbon, great. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the 17, 16, 15, like we were talking about, there was a subculture of bourbon lovers who are mad now that a greater number of people have access. Mm-hmm. So so what? So say so say lottery winners are, I mean I know it's hard to kind of, uh, you know, because I you know as a as a consumer and as someone that you know can't stand the whole flipping culture these days, especially what what people are flipping, um, you know, is there a way to 
to mitigate that, you think, in any way, shape, or form? Mitigate like, the flipping? Short, short of making them open the bottle once they pick up their winning bottle. Well, you know. Uh, open it right here before you leave or you can't leave. You know, learn, learn from the past, right? Yeah. You know, people get very creative. I mean, I've seen on Facebook, you know, a picture of a, 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 a sled, like, but there's three bottles of Weller Antique behind it. Yeah. You know, um, so another question that came in, uh, are in-person lotteries coming back at any point soon? So COVID kind of put a cramp on that. Well, yeah, definitely. And so is it still putting a cramp on it? still putting a cramp on Looking at any in-person lotteries? Well, I was this up? close to in-person what for uh, this one for the Weller? No, I was just oh. close recently to to like, hey, we're back to normal. Yeah. But the the um you know the variant, the Delta variant, uh still, you know, we don't want people lining up and and jamming up. And so to the extent we can avoid that, we are. And you know, the in person I love the in person stuff, but it causes people to gather. And so right now we're trying to, you know, reduce that, not increase that. Um, let's see here. I'll go to some of my other questions here and we'll, we'll get to all your questions too. I think there was a, a super chat that came in with a question, uh, independent Joe, do you feel Ohio system excludes certain bottles from hitting the Ohio market? Do you feel Ohio gets their share? Thanks. Great information. Oh, uh, Joe, independent Joe, we get more, uh, than anybody. Ohio is a monster in the market. It, it, it is a monster. And, they're competing with each other because we sell it. The sales velocity here for bourbon is, is just off the charts. Yeah. I mean, if you compare us to um, all control States, we're number one in terms of sales velocity and demand. We even beat like most of the open States, including California uh, and New York, Florida has a slight edge on us, but we, again, think about it. You are selling a product. Where do you want to put a product? Where you sell it the fastest. And so my job is to create a fertile marketplace in a high demand. And, and it's like, I, I don't take credit for the demand in Ohio. The demand in Ohio is just off the charts. Yeah, it's off the charts. And yeah. so naturally, the businesses want to come here. The suppliers want to come here. And so we get more than our fair share. And, uh, you know, to the extent that there is a brand of bourbon out there, that I'm unaware of, and I think you've got a few ideas. I have, this. I have a list for you. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna browbeat those suppliers, and I, I, and I have a Scotch list too that I think. The, the bring thing in. is, is you got a, if you've got a supplier that's got a limited quantity, yeah, yeah, and he's committed to other, you know, buyers. You know, I got to get in there and throw an elbow. Um, so do you want to, you want to address this guy because he's Which again guy? the one that's talking about taxpayer monies. My my boy John Big Fish. Yeah, it's not John. John, not, you got to no, John. You you really got to get educate yourself. There's no man. taxpayer money. It's not taxpayer money. Yeah, yeah. You know, nice try. It's, so Jim, it's, Mar re it's revenue mm -hmm. from the sales. Yep. Of the bottles, goes to Jobs Ohio, which is a nonprofit that takes the revenue and. Uh, uh, uses it for economic development, job creation, uh, and economic development. And Jobs Ohio um, is, uh, that's where they use the money. That's where the revenue goes. All the OHLQ uh, assets are supported uh, by Jobs Ohio. And that's where, that's how these OHLQ, and by the way, John Big Fish, you might want to check out OHLQ.com lately because it now updates every 15 minutes on sales. I will say this about OHLQ, and I was honest with Jim earlier. If, if, you're, if you're using OHLQ to find something generally available. Commodity stuff. A commodity stuff. Stuff that, you know, we sell in a lot of volume. And Evan Williams, the Rus Russell's Reserve, Makers 46, Knob Creek, stuff like that. You're, it's it's going to help you out. But if you're expecting OHLQ to tell you to where keep, that where to that keep up with a Blanton's, yeah, where Blanton's is at that second, it's just it's not going to happen. No. Uh, at least right now, you know, I don't no, know. No, it'll never keep it, up. Uh, yeah, it, it can't keep up um, because 
the truck pulls up, the Blantons rolls out. It doesn't even make it to the facing in on the shelf. Yeah. And so even every 15 minutes, by the time you get on OHLQ and you see, oh, there's a Blantons at my store. By yeah. the time you get in your car and get there, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Now, is that an OHLQ being inaccurate or just the demand and the sales velocity? Yeah, by the by the time you get there, and and if the store only got six bottles, three maybe going to wholesale, those are going to be gone. Right. That's the other thing is you know a, a, a case of Blanton's comes to the agency. Yeah. yeah. That agency has wholesale mm -hmm. for restaurants and bars, and they have retail customers, um, and soon it's going to be e-commerce and delivery uh, online, and so that same inventory is going to have to be made available for all of that demand. And so if you're looking at OHLQ.com for high demand, high velocity stuff, even though it's updating every 15 minutes, you are not ever gonna keep up with that. Do other states that are state controlled have a website like OHLQ? No, no. no not at all. No. Uh, I don't know, quick question from Young Pei Chang. Jim, what's your favorite sandwich? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey provolone with uh, horseradish mayo. Oh, damn, dude. Okay. I'll get on that. Um, on rye. All right. So, yeah, create higher demand for local distilleries. Donovan, that's something I'm working on, too. I want to shed some more light on some uh, local Ohio bourbons. Which I saw Ed Krasinski on there. <clears throat> Who? Ed Krasinski. Oh, what's Jim's favorite bourbon? Eddie knows what that is. Uh, so Jeff Popey has a good question and we'll, we'll kind of get to this. So no shipping Ohio. Why do you guys aggressively crack down on retail shipping Ohio? There are There's lots no, of laws on the books, so, loose enforcement. So how many states are there in the country now? 50 states. 51, 50 states, right? 51 states. If you include okay, Puerto Rico. So there are, <laughs> there are six states where it's legal to ship in high proof spirits. Six states. Six. Okay. Enough said. So... Now, so like that question though, Ohio <laughs> House Bill six seven four, people is, thought rectified that. No, you can't ship in from out of state with six seven four. Okay, it's so you, what is so what did six seven four cover? Six seven four is you can buy your beer, your wine, your spirits, your hoagie, and your slim jim at your retailer. Put it in a basket, buy it, and it gets delivered to your door. That's within Ohio. Within Ohio. Correct. Not outside Ohio. Correct. Okay. Like move to go. Kentucky, move to Hawaii, move to North Dakota, move to DC and New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire has a website that tracks their inventory at each location for everything to stock. There's no excuse for Ohio not to do that. Says Jim we, we do that, dude. Yeah, Jim Martin has a website that tracks. Uh, he's located for everything in that stock. There's no issue. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do, man. Um, it's you know the the uh, is there a skew on here? Barcode. Uh, on the let's see. Yeah, there you go. So there's a barcode on every bottle. That barcode at the point of sale at the cash register. Boop. We see that in an inventory control platform, just like every store, but. Like a huge, the hugest retailer ever, we see every sale at 490 locations. So we know the size, the brand, the category, the agency, every day, every night. Um, let's see here. What about, uh, will there be any shipping within the state to get liquor shipping? Like, within, um, like you said, well, you can buy it. You could buy something online as long as it's within the state and get it shipped to your house. You just can't do from it. an agency store. From an agency store, just, just like you just can't do it. Instead of shipping. like right now, we have curbside in some agencies, like the Giant Eagles, Acme, Bueller. Is it something? Kroger. Is it something Ohio wants to do or will do? Just passed the law. No, dude, I'm talking about no. Outside, we just did, no, outside, we just did it. outside. Oh, how to bring it in? Yeah, to Ohio? outside. Like if I wanted to go on a, a website in California that's selling Old Carter right there, mm -hmm. and I want a bottle. And I want to order it and ship it here. Can't do it? I don't know. No, not today. It's illegal. Six states do allow that. I mean, you don't you don't think that's a little archaic for today's time? I I'm the guy who follows the rules. Yeah. I don't 
make the rules. And I so, mean, yeah, I mean, and I, so I, like, I get that part like, of it. Like recre- yeah. recreational marijuana. If people want that. They pass a law. Somebody's got to make that happen. Medical marijuana, they pass the law. Somebody's got to make that happen. But right now, there's not a law that brings it in from other states. No. Yeah. Into Ohio, New Hampshire website can't keep up with the blends on their allocated bottles either. It doesn't even try anymore. Those bottles are now That's restricted right. and never list on the website. Who is that guy? Uh, Brandon. Bogey. Brandon, you know what? You know what's up, Michael Walker, comrade. Why did you ghost us on the People's Proof? Are you still willing to come? <laughs> I love Michael. I love Michael. He is a smart dude, and <laughs> I love that handle. Uh, in fact, we have a bar in town here uh, called uh, No Soliciting. And you got to have a password on the phone to pick it up, and you have to have a password to get in. Mm-hmm. The comrade sent me. Really? What's the password? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I'm going to make a trip up there, and we're going to go to dinner. Joseph Brazzers says, uh, tell Jim the camera wasn't working. I can clearly see his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want, dude? Uh, let's see here. Um... But uh, so, okay, so let's go on to a couple of other questions here uh, that I had. Uh, what are the craziest requests that you've gotten from consumers? If you can't, well, before we do that, pour that. Did you try that Chateau de la Bonne yet? Oh, but I will pour that. <clears throat> so, uh, I got a, I had a lady say if um, everyone in Ohio can't get a bottle of Pappy, we shouldn't sell it. Mm-hmm. That was the request. Is everybody should get a bottle of Pappy. Everybody should get a bottle Every, of Pappy? Everybody. Everybody. Should. Everybody in, in Ohio? Everybody in Ohio. Wow. Oh, that's a bold request. <laughs> the other one was uh, a club. You know, it's like really cool now to put a, like a, a club sticker right over like the supplier's label. Yeah. With their like little cool sticker. <laughs> Because they picked it and it must be the best. Well, and so well, like we're, yeah. you know, we're marketing it in secondary market because like our, our group of fools like picked the best shit. <laughs> and so anyways, they wanted to put my face on the sticker. So that that next to the Pappy, that was probably the craziest. That request. was the craziest request? Yeah. Oh, geez. And well, I, I suspected it had horns. Yeah. Horns and, and, your, tail, uh, and, your, and your camo hat. Uh, so let's get into picks. Can we talk about how Ohio does barrel picks? I would like to see more of a constant flow, but Mm -hmm. who does the picking? What is the process? That's a good question. So that's an awesome question. So, um, first of all, let's set the stage forever barrels, uh, would go to on-prem bars, restaurants would get barrels. Well, uh, so that actually that kind of goes into another question here uh, that I saw. Um, who determines whether restaurants, bars receive product versus retail? Okay, the suppliers yeah. decide. Ultimately, decide what they want to do with their precious juice. So, suppliers decide who gets what as far as retailers go, or I'm sorry, as far as, as retailers far as, and as far as restaurants. As far as the retail, how many are you going to get? And as far as which bars and restaurants are going to that's get? determined by the suppliers. And why? They're running a business. They want to put their products. So OHLQ has no say in that? Well, if, you know, they're going to be, uh, I would have say one time. Okay. And then the next time they wanted to bring in barrels, they'd be like, we're going to Pennsylvania. You know, so again, it's a relationship building with the suppliers who have a business, who have a marketing strategy, who have a, who have sales data. I mean, this is not like throwing darts in dark rooms. They want to compete with their competitors. They want market share. Like they're not in this for the ha ha's. They're in this for worldwide domination. And so, you know, they're deciding like which marketplace do they want to go in? And within a, within the state, what agencies? Mark Brown, 150 agencies had them picked out. What bars and restaurants do you want to put it? With, and no dis- disrespect to a a taco place, but is that a bourbon? place right and you want to be on the back bar next to your competitor and you want that bartender talking about your product and so yeah the suppliers are the ones deciding now on the picks first of all um access to barrels was 
was non-existent to the regular person. Bars, restaurants is where they went and some clubs. And so again, one of my bourbon nuts in 17 is like, you know, why don't, why doesn't Ohio get barrel pick? So like you can buy a bottle, single barrel snowflake, and that would be great. And I'm like, I was like, that's a good idea. So Maker's Mark was like the first experiment. And I was like, you know, wringing my hands because we were going to get three barrels. And they were like, why don't you get five? And I'm like, okay, we'll get five. Well, they sold in an hour. Oh, well, the Maker's Picks? Yeah, yeah those things sold they, they sold in an hour. Yeah. So then uh, Wild Turkey's like, well, Maker's Mark, Maker's Maker. Ohio's doing uh, barrel barrel program. So let me ask you though on Maker's Picks. Because Maker's, when you go there, and I'm about to do a Maker's Pick in a couple mm -hmm. weeks. I mean, you could spend all day there putting staves together, figuring it out. Yeah. And you guys are releasing like 15 of them, like it seems, every time. How How is that process even possible? How's it go? How's it go? Yeah. Like who's – like does each person make their own blend? Like, all right, so up. So the makers uh, – uh, you know, Denny. Yeah, Denny Potter. Yeah, Denny's sitting there. Mm -hmm. And their, their brand people are sitting there. And we're bringing, you know, uh, you know, John Lane from Winking Lizard or Elton from Prohibition or Joe Head from Century Bar or, you know, we're bringing heavy hitter. So you guys are bringing heavy hitter, heavy palettes, hitter palettes to the to right. these picks. Right. And that's not just not makers. Obviously, that's for all the Wild picks that Turkey. Ohio does. Wild Turkey. Right. All right. So you guys aren't just it's just not a bunch of. <laughs> Guys that work in your office, go, yeah, I'll get that barrel, that barrel. <laughs> yeah, that sounds you got, awesome. Yeah, you have real, you have, yeah, you know, guys yeah, that are we, in the business picking these yeah, barrels. Yeah, we have heavy hitter because that's one of the biggest questions I get. I'm like, I don't know who picks yeah, them. Heavy, honestly, we, you know, the credibility at the beginning had to do with the palettes. Yeah, I, you know, it wasn't like, oh, Jim Canepa's the greatest. No, we're gonna get like the master Eddie, you know, Eddie Russell, Chris Morris, uh, Denny. You know, they're there. You know, Eddie is literally with the thief, you know, smacking the bungs with a big sledgehammer. Yeah. With the thief, like we're baby birds with, you know, and we got, we got, we want the program to be great. And so. Um, it has, it has gone well. You said, you said you're actually. It's nuts. I'm going to Austin next week. So you're going to be in Austin pitching this, your program. Not even pitching it. Just the, describing the, how it works. The association of. Of, that represents all the suppliers worldwide wants Ohio to come talk about their barrel program to all the other suppliers. Okay. Because it's other states and open and control want to replicate it. Now, I'm a little hesitant to give my secrets away, but. Well, you don't have to give us the whole can of worms here. No, I mean, here, here <laughs> I will, but. <laughs> oh, I don't want, other, I don't want other states. All the other states doing the same right. thing. Right. Yeah. Um, can you explain the value prop of why the state should control liquor within the state? What are the top three reasons aside from MSRP? It's a good question. Uh, we kind of talked about that before. Um, uh, well, it, good it, for good for the good for the state. It's it the selection is expand dramatically because we can afford to take chances that a small retailer can't. Yeah, like if you go to Benny's, they got a big selection. Yeah. But if you go to the liquor store down the street from Benny's, they've got the commodity bourbons. So selection, price, access. I mean, I, we can we can provide. I'll, I'll put it this way: do some research on the state of Washington, who thought it would be a good idea to privatize. Prices went up, selection went down because think about it: it's like a Costco, Sam's Club model. You see how I'm pimping somebody on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, so I brought that right in there. Yeah, so, why? Sam's so, so two questions. So, so two questions that I've seen multiple: Sam's in Club, here. Costco. Well, yeah. Why don't? Why doesn't Costco and Sam's so that's Club? What would, that's sell what happens. Here. That's what happens in a private market. The big, big guys come in and they take over all the small guys. That's what that's Amazon, Sam's Club, Costco model. Yeah. And what what happens is what are those big box going to put on their shelves? They're going to put the commodity brands that everybody buys. The Kirkland, the, the, the new bottle. But bombs. even even if they don't slap their own name on it when it's re really like Crown Royal or really something else, the selection is going to be what they sell.
in volume. You know, my wife's buying, you know, 30 packs of toilet paper. It's going to be volume and what people buy, buy in volume. So, but okay. So let's talk through this from a business standpoint. If I'm Costco, I want to come in. Well, I'm here, I'm in Ohio or Sam's club, whatever it may be. And I want to start selling liquor. You're going to eat up all the small guys and you're going to. This but, but aren't you providing, isn't, wouldn't it still go to Ohio? No, they're talking about the privatizing. Oh, so. So if you want to privatize. Yeah, but what if it wasn't privatized? Well, then it, it, we put out a bid. And if Costco had uh, put a, it's a, it's a public bid. It's a contract yeah. to have liquor in your agency. Okay. So if, if you're talking about like, how does Costco get in the. Uh, liquor business in Ohio, they would have to respond to a bid for an agency store and win the bid. Now, the problem is their model is bulk volume, basic brands. And it's, you know, that's not really what I'm looking for. Uh, this is another question that I saw that comes up. So why does OHLQ hold on to bottles for months before releasing? I love that. We don't. We don't. That's nonsense. Okay. We're again, we're in the business. We're not a club. We're in the business to sell it. It comes in from the supplier on a big giant semi. We have two warehouses, green up in toward, towards Akron. And we've got Grove city um, here uh, near Columbus. The trucks come in, the cases come off. They get scanned in. They go out to the agencies. There's no, reason business-wise why we would hold bottles it doesn't now if we're doing a pappy lottery or we're doing a uh uh birthday bourbon lottery if we're doing lotteries we gotta get that organized and it sits there until the winners are announced but for uh, so we already have some skeptics i don't believe that then why does every stag junior release months late now is it a matter of you holding bottles or is it a matter that Ohio just gets it later than everyone else? Is there a difference? We, we hold nothing. We hold nothing. That, foolishness. Okay. So we're not holding anything in the warehouses before. Lotteries. Class. Lotteries. Those are the ones that are held because we're until the winners are announced. But there's no re, there's no, think about it. There's no business reason. We're selling. We're, we're in the business of selling, not holding. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 and the suppliers have something to say about that too. Like they don't want there. There's every market in the world to go to. Why in the world would they come to Ohio and continue to come to Ohio? Mm -hmm. And which is one of the best markets they have. If we're gonna hold on to it, that that makes no sense. That's not even logic. Um, how is it possible that OHLQ released discontinued Old Weller Antique One Point Seven Fives last fall? So that's something that I have noticed, though. Discontinued. But there's something that I have noticed with OHLQ. Hey, what's up, Richie Z? Nice to see you, man. Um, I've seen bottles that that I thought were gone. They're still in market. That just show up. They're Amazing. Still, they're still like, in the market. One uh, one example is the Knob Creek 25th anniversary I have over there. That bottle released. What? So we have five, six years ago. And then I think like a few months ago, it like popped up in the store. I'm like, no. Uh, also, um, Wild Turkey Cornerstone came back last year's release. So, how does that happen? So, a couple of things happen. First of all, there's like markets and agencies <clears throat> out there where the stuff does not sell, mm -hmm. and it'll sit there, and then somebody will walk in and be like, "Oh my God, it's a gold mine! It's a it's a gold nugget." Um, but with the with the one point seven five uh, Weller. Uh, Sazerac discontinued the, the handles um, and there were still 175s in the market. All right. So I have some, I have some other really good questions here. First uh, super chat from Michael Walker. What's the status of the implementing regs on the home delivery program? What's the ETA on when it starts? So the rules are still in the legislature. They need to have hearings on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nothing complicated right now in Ohio statute. Um, uh, bars and restaurant wholesale can deliver to the agencies can deliver to wholesale accounts. Mm -hmm. And so we added a, basically another sentence that said, and to retail customers. And so it's really that simple. It's with the legislature. They need to have hearings on it. It could happen um, as soon as December one. 
but the agencies themselves need to opt in there. They need to have the point of sale technology uh, on the internet uh, to be able to take a credit card payment. Um, and then third part, they will contract with third parties. Each agency will contract with third parties to do the delivery. Um, so good question, Michael. It's close. Um, all right. So let's see here. Uh, I recently bought a bottle of Hainer bourbon from Troy, Ohio. I was not expecting much, but to my surprise, it was one of the best 90 foot bourbons I've tasted. Have you guys tried this? Can't say I've tried Hainer. Just haven't yet. had it. Uh, when will the winners of the current lottery be announced? Friday. This Friday. Um, so, yeah, so same thing. So, Kentucky Owl Rye Batch 4 just showed up last week. This was a 2020 release. Just, so, what happened there? Just floating around in market. It's just, I find stuff, I find little Easter eggs too. If you're, you know, if you're, that's what I tell people all the time is go to agencies that are like in the hinterlands. So that's a question that I got earlier about um, brand, like smaller stores that are out in the more rural areas of Ohio mm -hmm. that don't get a lot of variety because of where they are. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there any reason why we could possibly see more distribution to them or is it all based on sales? So again, suppliers are looking at sales data. Do they want to? Put, so that's do, what I figured. It's all based on data. Do, they, do wanna, they want to put their bottles in somewhere that's not selling a lot of volume? See, think about it like this: suppliers are looking at sales data to see how fast it's moving, and if it sits for a, if it sits too long on the shelves, yeah. the next time I get re-upped for those things, they're going to be like, oh, "It didn't sell very fast." So I want it to sell as fast as possible. But on the other hand, I'll, I do what, what's called a sprinkle method. I will sprinkle mm -hmm. highly allocated stuff in the hinterlands because I know soon as somebody stumbles on it, it's going to go social media and everybody's going to run into that store. Uh, so let's see. So I, I see Ann Demick's in here. Jim, what is your favorite barrel pick? Best one you ever did. Hi, Ann. Oh, that's... Nice to see you. Ann Demick is from uh, Watershed. Thanks for oh, chiming in. There, there's so many, but, you know, Eddie... I, I love the Eddie Rustic spill it on your shoes. Picks. Um, there was a question here from Top Shelf Dust, and I wanted to get to you here. I just gotta find it. Top Shelf Dust. Yeah, Dustin. Dustin, if you could. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, Ohio's the worst selection in the party source and worst prices. Imagine this is a private store that takes advantage of Ohio's bad market. Ask them about it. Was a private oh so party source he's saying is a party private party source in that Kentucky takes advantage, uh, that takes advantage of Ohio's bad market. Ask him about it. Well, actually, party source. Last time I was there, are like convetching about agencies that were opening on the border because people from Kentucky are coming here. Now, if he's talking about like prices, I think, prices I of vodka. I think he's also talking from a Scotch standpoint. Too. If he's talking about Scotch and vodka and flat demand things they can price it they can price again they're private private owners who bought a bunch of stuff yeah it's sitting there what are you gonna do with it discount it by the way did you try the uh chateau de la Bar yet? it's nuts it's good right this guy's this guy's collection is Nuts. Uh, let's see here. When is the next OHLQ RR pick? When is the next OHLQ Russell Reserve pick? We just did. We just bought ten barrels. Um, they'll be in for the holidays. A lot of Camp Nelson. Uh, let's see. People are coming. Are Coming here for Weller. For Weller, but we are going to Kentucky just to, to get just about everything. Like what? Are you finding Blanton's there? Are you finding Buffalo yeah, Trace? Yeah, yeah, Daniel. Are you, yeah. are you finding Buffalo Trace there? Are you finding... What are you finding there? Um, because that's yeah. what I do when I go to Kentucky is I go into those stores and I go, oh, where's the... Oh, Blanton's in there. Oh, where's the... Oh, that's... Yeah, there. Daniel, give some uh, examples of what you're going to Kentucky for. Yeah, because... Yeah. I mean, there is some stuff, I mean, yeah, that I go to Kentucky for. Like, I can't get Old Carter. Yeah, Old here. Carter. Yeah. I can't get Fourgate here. I can't get Sam Houston here. I can't get um, 
Well, well we had other ones here. I can't get Mayor Pingree. I can't get. I mean, but again, yeah. these are some brands that we need to talk about that you need to bring in. So let's talk about that real quick. So, well, Smoke Wagon is probably the number, wagon. is the number one request by that I got email that so tells you we love, want Smoke Wagon. I, I would love Carter, Smoke Wagon. I would love Peerless. I would love them all. The, the challenge is not like, do we want it or not? The challenge is, does the supplier, <laughs> does the supplier, <laughs> Drew. I know, does the supplier, can he crack off some of that supply? for another market. Yeah. And so that's really the, it's not about, do we want it? We want it all, man. We want it all. Yeah. And I want it to the exclusion of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, especially. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Bring in old Carter for sure. Mm -hmm. I realize it's a business. Aaron and the Carters aren't ready to expand to more see, markets. Willett, Willett was just like that. You know, yeah. Troy with Willett. Um, I worked on him for three years. In peerless, fact, peerless rise in Ohio, not peerless bourbon. Right. Well, peerless bourbon didn't peerless bourbon sell here for for quick, but we didn't get a lot of it. Been. Could it be? But let me tell the Willet story. Yeah. Uh, I worked on Troy for three years, and it was a club guy, a Willet, yeah. a huge Willet fan who put the connection together, mm -hmm. and now we have Willet. Yeah. I mean, so it's really, again, relationship. This is, I think, is a true statement. 10% of my bourbon, rest goes out of state. But Jim's strategy is about making whiskey collectors happy. It's moving as much mass market volume as he can. And I think with that, you're getting more. Yeah, you might be getting more volume. You might be getting other brands to come in. But they're getting sucked up so fast. Uh, and they're going to specific data points. And I think, I think that's where state versus non-state like non-state, yes, you're you're you might gonna be able, you're probably gonna pay more. Pay a so lot more. Gonna pay and and where are you gonna find it? Well, it depends because like I have still great stores in New York that I can get good stuff but, for. But how many stores? Three. Right. That I can get good stuff for New York's a big place. Yeah, New York's a big place. But I'm saying if but listen, bourbon hunters, right, they know where they're gonna hunt. Right. So there's just three so, stores. Yeah, I have my three stores in New York where I know I'm gonna get stuff and I can't get it in Ohio and I could get it for a decent price. Right. So, you know, but so that's the good thing about maybe a private side of it, but on the state side of it, well, but you're looking at data, you're looking at mass market, you're looking at who's gonna buy what. Here's way. where we're gonna arm wrestle. Okay. Uh those three stores in New York. Are serving all of New York, so who? How many people in New York are ha, have access to those three stores? Not many. Well, I mean, you, depending on where. I mean, by the time you get there, depending where they're willing to drive. Well, but by the time they get there, is it going to yeah. be gone or not? Yeah. And so, the 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 narrative is, you know, can you have three stores like Benny's or those three stores in New York or? A, a state like Ohio who will is willing to spend the money and bring in whatever they can. And so, like, again, if it's bourbon, there is no thumbs up, thumbs down. We're going after it. And so it's just a matter of going after it. Uh, but, but when it comes in, yeah. but when it comes in, you get 30 cases. What do you do with it? You get 100 cases. What do you do with it? No. What do you do with it? I mean, it goes to, I put it in three stores. We'll do the New York model. We get 50 cases of something you really want. I put it in three stores. What's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to get eaten up. Right. Uh, a value proposition. Thanks to Electron Cloud for the super chat. If the value proposition is to create collective bargaining power, every distillery distributor would want to sell it into Ohio. So why is selection limited? Because the supplier has to decide they want to come to this market. The supplier so, decides. So what so what are what would make a supplier not want to come to Ohio? Because they're already allocated. They're already allocated in their for example, um, a lot Willet is to, was totally allocated. Uh, Blade and Bow, totally allocated. But you have to like say, hey, but you really want to be here. Because your competitors are killing it here. And they're like, oh, okay. And they start off small. And then they're like, oh, that was pretty, that was pretty easy to market, pretty supported. We're getting a great buzz on it. Yeah. 
Uh, this one too, Donovan Hunsinger. Thanks so much. Why doesn't OHLQ do more to help small Ohio distilleries expand on sales in new areas? It's a good question. So again, you can make it, but people have to want it. So it's not the field of dreams marketing strategy. Build it and they will come. Yeah. So if there's an Ohio distillery that makes it, and we put it on the shelves, people have to buy it. And, you know, the advantage that Ohio distillers have is because they're Ohio, we're going to take a chance on them. Well, I also think that plays into, you know, even not just Ohio small distilleries, but any small distillery. The market is so saturated with new brands, new single barrels, source brands. Mm -hmm. It's it's just getting harder and harder each year to you well, know, no, make an impact. Well, think about it. So you, you make your... your you know, Jason's distillery, you make, you that know, sounds good. You make, you make a hundred cases of something. Yeah. And you want to come put them on the shelves in 490 stores in Ohio. And you're like, if I put it in all 490 stores, people will buy it. You put it in all 490 stores. You have to sell one bottle a month in each of those 490 stores to be profitable. To, for for me to buy more from you. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, even though you get paid, because I buy your stuff, put it on the shelves, people now have to buy it. And that's the challenge. Yeah. Uh, Scotch is selling like hotcakes in the States now versus three years ago when we did sell off. Also, I also want to bring up. He also, doesn't get it. Also, Irish whiskey. It's flat, dude. Look at the sales data. Um. So and also Irish whiskey, but I think Scotch though. I mean, so Irish. I think sales is flat. Irish actually is starting to is starting to uh, increase. Scotch is just flat now. But if we is, is so, there's not there's not, there. I under, and, now and, I, and there's that's not being for disparaging. Guy, I know, but a guy who loves Scotch though, I'm just I'm just saying. Now if you don't have brands like I could say Springbank, I could say Hazelburn, I could say uh, um, God Longmorn. Uh, Kilcarran. I mean, you do have some Kilcarran. Mm -hmm. More Bunahav. Just uh, more Scotch brands in the state. How do you know they won't sell if you don't have them? I, we go back to if if there's a supplier out there with a brand that wants to sell Scotch in Ohio, I'm buying it. All right. So again, we're, we're but where does the supplier want to put their products? Yeah. But again, where we're, it's we're, selling. Again, we're relying on the supplier to want to come here. They so want to come here. We need Springbank to say we want to sell Spring in Ohio. Bank, Springbank's got to say, Ohio's, they want my product in Ohio. Now, if it's flat, they're not coming to Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd say the Scotch in Ohio is the same old boring brands. I again, mean, it's not government cheese. Yeah. Every you know the suppliers have to want to come here and sell their products. Justin Johnson, I don't care about crap. I want more of the big brand. I would love to see Stag Junior blends on. That's never going to happen in, in today's market. You're never going to see Stag Junior or Bland sitting on a shelf, unless it just goes off the rails uh, somehow. So, just... Justin, do you think Sazerac yeah. is going to bring all of the Stag and all of the Blands in the world to Ohio? Yeah. No. Um. Let's see. That's not how it works. I mean, so do you have any say to the supplier? Can you go to a supplier and, you know, ask oh, yeah, them, I want, you, I want you to. I want more. I want you to come in. I, I want, want more. To... More. Come in. More, 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 more. All right. In so, fact, in fact, when uh, the suppliers come to me and they're like, hey, we have this. I'm like, can I get more? Yeah. Wouldn't uh, you? Well, I mean, yeah, I was. Right. Go to New York City. It's on show for 150 to 200. Oh, for the, uh, for, yeah, for uh, Stag Jr. and stuff. Yeah. Are they even asking the Scotch suppliers to sell in Ohio? Yes. So is God, there any we're running a business here. We want to sell. Is there, is there any? God, if we could sell it, we are going to buy it. <laughs> is there any, is there God. any, is there any supplier is you that a asked? Concept? Is there any supplier you asked, uh, in a Scotch standpoint to come to Ohio? And they oh, said yeah. no. Yeah. I mean, Shoot, uh, I forget which uh, which one it was. They had three barrels of, I forget which scotch it was, for the whole United States. And I got one. I'm like, can I have them all? No, you can't have them all, but you can have one. And so, yeah, they, they 
they have markets worldwide. I mean, scotch is huge in India right now. Huge. The demand for scotch in India is off the charts. Uh, let's see. For example, why is it not asking about Aaron? Aaron. It's a it's winning ward after ward. Do you Which know one? about Aaron? Aaron Scotch, the brand Aaron. A R R A N. Call them up. Tell them I want it. Bring it here. All right. Well, uh, get it. Know, see, see the rhythm here. Well, we'll bring. I'll I'll make a list uh, and and get to him before he leaves of stuff we want to see here in Ohio, including. So you guys can leave some comments below in the video right now and tell me. Give me a list of brands you want to see in Ohio. Bring it. I'll give it to him. And we'll see what he does with it. We'll challenge Jim. Bring it. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, yeah. Bullmore. That's another great one. Um, absolutely. Bullmore. We get that. We don't get Bullmore. There we go. B-O-W-M-O-R-E. Oh, I thought you were talking B-A-L. No. Bal Bal no. Okay. No. No. Dalmore you're thinking of. Dalmore we get. Nobody wants Dalmore. <laughs> All right, let's go to the blind flight. Um, just grab a list of all the YouTube whiskey awards and grab those. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good one. I yeah, bubble bath. Yeah. All right, we used to get yeah. This is actually kind of a good back and forth. I feel like Jim is learning a little bit about what we want too, not just what you know you want. To scotch. Sell. You want you want lots of scotch that's flat well, in even, sales. Even if we did a boutique store with some high end, some more scotch, we have those. You know, we have those. No, I know you have those, but those stores are shady, man. No, we actually have legit <laughs> Scotch stores, dude. Where? Go down Bethel Road. I'll take you to tomorrow. I'll take you there. Which one? Which store? I'll show you. There's a Scotch boutique store in Bethel. It's not a boutique store, but they got a huge selection. Is that is that a uh, what call it? North uh, Northwest. I'll take you there. All right. Jason, I gave that list to the LCBO here in Canada. The list was huge. We want more bourbons, whiskeys. <laughs> store picks matter. All right, so we covered store picks. We covered brands we want to get. Oh, in. store pick. No, actually, store picks are funny because, like, I'm, in, you, so talk, I'm in South Carolina. Can you talk about those store picks that are coming to Ohio that you told me about earlier? Or you can't talk about those? Yeah. Yet? What do you mean? We just uh, – The uh, Sazerac ones. Yeah, we had uh, – So coming to Ohio to a – this is these aren't going to be lottery, are BT, they? BT, uh, Buffalo Trace, Buffalo Trace uh, Blanton's, okay. Taylor, Blanton's pick, Taylor pick. Mm -hmm. Are these going to be lotteries though? Uh, well, again, three barrels. So very probably lottery. We'll see. There'll okay. be a, there'll be a lot that go to uh, on prem. Right. Uh, Brian Mackey, the Mashing Drum. I live in Evansville, Indiana, and Indy gets most allocations. It's the same in Ohio, like Cincy, Cleveland, Columbus, getting the vast majority of allocations. That's where the demand is. Okay. Uh, let's see here. But we sprinkle them out there in the hinterlands. Yep, Smoke Wagon. Um, how does Ohio come up with the prices of liquors that are sold? Statutory. So we buy it at the price that the... Um, Suppliers like take you know take Weller, they sell it to us for I don't know what does it Weller go for 26, 28, 30? What does it go for? Weller Green Green yeah about 28, 28. Yeah. So we buy it at uh, cost, and then there's a statutory overhead baked in price that's like thirty four percent something like that, which takes it up to twenty eight bucks, and so that's what it'll be from. Toledo to Marietta. So uh, so one question I know I got, and I do want to address this, is is there any repercussions or any intel or anything that you have for stores that are selling backdoor? Yes. Now, the only reason why I bring this up is because the Russell's 13 drop in Ohio, mm -hmm. most people thought was a clusterfuck. And I mean, I don't Jason's know. Jason's words, not yeah, mine. I don't know what anyone else's experiences were but my own. I heard like stores got, you know, three bottles and all of a sudden they went to the store and so one the guy the, never had any because they feel like they sold so, it to his friends. How does that work? How does that get monitored? So one, one of your questions here, what, you know, what has changed the, the most in the retail experience or the, the store experience? And the, the biggest thing that I cracked down on, and it's a top 10 sin for me, is agency stores and shenanigans with the product that they don't own. So we have uh, a liquor enterprise service center. It's mm -hmm. a one eight seven seven number. Look on the OHLQ. 
if you feel that there's shenanigans, I investigate all of them. The thing that you should understand and everybody else should understand is those agencies are, are at will contracts. So if they commit that sin of playing shenanigans with inventory, especially on a highly allocated, the, that product will go across the street to their competitor if I investigate it and, and find that it's true. So the 1877 number is like my eyes and ears, secret choppers across the state. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, that's a, that is a, that's... that is a top 10 sin. There's zero tolerance for it. The agencies know it. And if they're still doing it, it's at their, at, it's at their peril. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. I want bourbon, Stellum, barrel, three cord, Elijah Craig barrel proof. Well, we have Elijah Craig barrel proof. Knob Creek, Knob Creek nine. We had that that came and went. Um, wait, Knob Creek nine. Yeah, we had. We always Knob yeah. Creek nine is the regular Knob Creek. Yeah, that's. I mean, the single barrels go from nine to thirteen years. Um, I dropped four hundred my last trip to Kentucky because Ohio. Wait. Ohio gets Elijah Craig barrel proof, but you got to remember again, Ohio sells out shit super fast. I think when people talk about Ohio and they want, they can't find stuff here, the good stuff that Ohio gets at retail sells immediately. Gone. It's gone. So, unless you have a, you know, this also brings into building store relationships, knowing when shipments are coming in. Most guys know when the shipments are coming in, and I get that part of it. And it is. It gets really fucking frustrating. Um, but, you know, for everyone out there that says, I want to see this stuff on the shelf. It's not going to be gonna, there. You're going to have to talk to everyone else in Ohio that's buying this shit up and either buying it, drinking it, or flipping it. That's just the way the market is, unfortunately. And It's Beanie Babies. I mean, people are chasing this stuff down and buying it like it's Beanie Babies. Like, you yeah. know, and who knows what they're doing with it? They're drinking it. They're flipping it. They're... But it's not staying on the shelf. That's just the, the demand here is crazy. Is it a possible for OHLQ to have a gift shop experience like the silly and sell bourbons that are hard to get in Ohio? That's you know the, the lotteries are a version of that. The okay, you know, back when we pre COVID, it was the in store uh, raffles. Oh, in store raffles, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we'll, we'll get back to it well, when we'll, we get when we'll we get, get some healthy. More questions, but let's uh, let's get some more. Let's let's do this blind tasting that I got set up for you. Um, does Ohio ever do limit one? Yeah, there's there's limit ones. Uh, so depending on the store you go to, the, the, the retailers, our yeah. private retailers, will support their their decision on how they want to sell that stuff. If it's one, yeah. If it's on Saturday, if it's you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Aiden has a good point. It's it, guys, it's just fucking whiskey. I mean, everyone that's getting pissed off and and uh, and annoyed. Hey, the ones I who get, get it. the ones who get mad and annoyed are the ones who had the hookup. Yeah, well, they, they had a hookup, yeah. and now they don't. Now everybody has access to it, and I, that's what I. That's my job is to make sure people have access to it. All right, so you go to your number one here. So I'm pretty sure Jim has never had any of these, I think. What do you get on that one? I think I lined them up. Here, give me give me your glass. Let me look at the bottom. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's in the right order. All right, yeah, yeah you want that one first. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, people get definitely get salty. That's but, okay. Yeah, but I mean... I mean, you get pretty nasty messages throughout, you know, your time. I mean, it's it's like endless. So, you know, for all the shit that Jim takes, I mean, and, you know, I know, you know, anybody that is in, because bourbon is such a volatile thing in whiskey, you know, these days, and it's so volatile and it changes rapidly. It's still growing. It's still intense. You know, you know, as much as you take a lot of shit, you know, I, I, I do, uh, I do thank you for improving the market. Obviously, there's some flaws that still need to be worked through because it's an ever-changing market. But I do appreciate the picks, you know. Yeah, supply and demand is going to dictate a lot. Yeah. Supply and demand yeah. is going to dictate everything. I mean, it's not a perfect system, but neither is the three-tier system. So it's, you know, you just kind of have to pick your poison. But I, I always stress to everyone, build relationships with your store owners. See if you could find out what's coming in, what's worth 
So waiting in line for so what you're saying is what I do with suppliers. Yeah. Build a relationship. I build relationships with suppliers. Yeah. So we get more. Yep. Boy, that number two is almost <clears throat> smoky like a campfire. Mm. Number one tastes like root beer. That is really root beery, whatever that is. It's got a real like root beer type of um, thing to it. Uh, <laughs> smoky. No, it's definitely not High West Campfire. It's uh, if you guys haven't yet, please uh, hit the like button below. Uh, definitely helps out the video. Um, you know, Jim, thanks for coming on and taking all the heat. I appreciate it. Bring it. <laughs> well, number two is definitely my favorite. Number two? Mm -hmm. Man, one is um, one is like drinking a root beer float. But it's hard to discern what distillery that could be because root beer is not like a general, like super uh, common note I get mm -hmm. in whiskey. Let me go to B here. High West Midwinter's Night Dram better come to Cleveland this year. <laughs> uh, I'm proud. First time I've heard you say waiting in line instead of online. <laughs> That's right, prescription bourbon. Thanks. Uh, so Blend Again is starting next week, guys. Blend Again is starting next week. I delayed it one week because uh, I'm going away this weekend, and I still have some blends coming in. So Blend Again is going down next week. We're going to – the World Whiskey – category we'll start next week um and then uh the following week we'll start the american whiskey blends so next week we get to see if donald rance will defend his title because he sent in uh he sent in his blend and we actually got a good amount of uh, world whiskey blends this year so it should be pretty cool all right let's see here uh thank you for setting this up always impressed with comrade Kanepa being a good sport <laughs> Is that michael again yeah Michael's a smart dude. He gives me shit, but he's a he's a smart dude. Now B tastes like an orange cream sickle. Is this like you taking me down the candy trail? Yeah. I got root beer. I got a cream sickle. So cream sickle, I always think of rye or high rye mm. when I think cream sickle. I get I get orange cream stuff in uh, some uh, some wild turkey stuff sometimes, and also NGP. Mm. What's the uh, what's the <laughs> What's the uh, the rye market like in Ohio? Great. Is it is it as strong as bourbon, or you've seen an uptick? Oh, or? it's it's very strong. It's very very strong. I, I would say it's it's fifty fifty. <clears throat> um, so Irish whiskey, we we brought up earlier. Love I, Irish. I, I do want to I do want to bring this in for um, uh, uh, for Donald Rance, who asked earlier. Uh, when will we see more of the newer brands like Dingle, uh, Waterford, or Bowen? Uh, are you bringing back brands like West Cork and Kilbegan? Will we see expansions of brands? Will we have like Busker and Teeling? Oh, Teeling, uh, Teeling, we already have. Yeah, Teeling, we have. But, um, and uh, but there, there are uh, there are a good amount. We don't get Teeling single grain, single malt is not here. We get the small batch. <clears throat> we want it all. Um, we want it all, man. We have to get Waterford here because Waterford is doing some incredible stuff. You have a hookup, so I'll, I'll I'll work on it. Can you do, you know, carry the carry some load here, man? All right, I'll dude. I got a list now. I got, I, like I said, all the viewers in the comments, write down what you want to see in Ohio if it's not here. Yeah, that's, I will give it to Jim. This I, is that's like an easy punch list. I feel like Jim is also learning here about what we want, so which is a good thing. <laughs> Top shelf. I'm okay with no Waterford. Top Shelf, he can't even, uh, Top Shelf can't even make up his fucking mind. I know. <laughs> no, I'd probably go one, two, three. This is kind of... Really? This uh, is almost flat. <laughs> I can't wait till you find out what these are. <laughs> I mean, they're, I'm not going to throw any of them out. Yeah. But, you know, it's all relative. Uh, can we see more barrel picks in stores? Get us more old Forester picks, bro. 
Master Drum, Old Forester, Rye 100. So ben Old Forester, so Old Forester, you know, they're they're kind of stuck in the four to five year age statement, you know. Um, and, and I'm kind of like come off some of the older stuff. And but they're they're really tight on barrels. You mean for single barrel picks? Yeah. Okay. They're old Forester is Old Forester. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can restaurants not cut into retail barrel picks since they can do their own? No, they do cut in. They, For every barrel that goes to on-prem, it's pulling those cases off of retail. Mm. Which, you know, you got to have that on-prem barrel because... You know that they're selling it by the drink, and that's a great that's a great marketing tool for the suppliers. They love it. Um, here's a good kind of a quick punch list: Old Carter, Forgate, Pursuit United, Smoke Wagon, Nulu, Obtainium, and Barrel. Those are all great, great mm -hmm. uh, suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, Gabriel wants some tequila. Thanks for bringing in G Four Tequila. Can Fortaleza Tequila be next? So tequila is like we want as we want all the tequila we can get. We want all the bourbon we can get, all the tequila we can get. Yeah. Uh, Obtainium is another one I see people calling out. Something from Spider-Man. Uh, Obtainium? <laughs> <laughs> House Wills in Australia, Ohio, especially Barrel Picks. Love Wild Turkey. Going to see Dr. Pat playing his band in Owens Barrel this Friday and releasing some picks. Um, I'm a huge fan of Will and Trail. Yeah, we did uh, We did a single barrel yeah. uh, program with uh, – in. It's just supply. What do they got? What do they got available? We'll buy it. So, I mean, we, we spoke a little bit about this. It's an algorithm. Uh, can Jim speak to the method used to select OA? So why an algorithm and not random, just so many people? That's what it is. It's so, pe so much people. Because it's so many people. Um, and the algorithm is the randomization. It's just a version of, you know, a big, like, you know, bingo thing. Instead okay. of that, it's just... Uh, it's math. I couldn't imagine an LCBO executive having the stones for doing this. So good on you, Jim. I love Here. LCB. LCBO, and I mean Ontario. <laughs> Ontario is is awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I love I love Ontario. Like, if I have to look at, uh, you know, by the way, but when I was in Ontario just recently, they've got cases of Blanton stacked up. Here's a here's a good uh, question. Uh, does the state cap your purchases, or are you on a budget that limits you? No. I buy all of what they have. And that's when I go into a barrel pick or when they're offering me stuff, I'm like, I will take it all. I will take it all. I think that's something MGP B. You might be onto something. A. A's tough, man. It's fucking root beer. What the hell is root beer? I get Buffalo Trace root beer sometimes in Wellers. But C. You ready for the reveal? I don't know. C is coming in a little bit more Buffalo Tracy to me than anything. What's your favorite? Might be the root beer one. I'm digging A. Because just because it's different and unique. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would I would I would say one, two, three. And this one's giving me some cherries. This one's giving me uh real viscous um Sweet, smoky. Actually, that's a good call. Whiskey Mountains root beer is something you do get in Woodenville. Uh, one of those, uh, one of those, the out west um, distilleries. Woodenville does do like a root beer cream soda type thing. MGP, and this, I mean, this is Buffalo Tracy to me. Which one is that? The last one. So those three. And so what do you have? And you, I, I. I'm actually, I like this. I actually like this lineup right here. I like it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. So, so let's show me what's your last place and I'll show you what last place is. Last place. And this is my last place. So let's show each other last place. Okay. Ones. Last place. Yeah. What is it? What do you got? Your last place is Buffalo Tray Single Barrel. Son of a bitch. What did I say? Buffalo Tracy. Buffalo Tray Single Barrel is your last choice. And this is this is just a regular Buffalo Trace. This is single barrel Buffalo Trace. And this is going to be the Buffalo Trace that's, a, that's, gonna, one that's of, coming out. One of five barrels. It's good. So it's, it's a good Buffalo Trace barrel. <clears throat> and the one that you like the best. Wait, no, don't show, don't show that yet, dude. 
I don't jump on the gun. How man. does this work? No, I gotta show you the. Uh, right. I gotta show oh, you your show last me, place. Show me my last place. What did? What you, is it like? What What did you tell me before when you said if you want what What would be the only bourbon if you could drink on? Oh, a no, 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 yeah. no, no. The bourbon you could drink on a deserted island for the rest of your life. What did you say? Birthday. Old Forest of Birthday Bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> it's the newest one. Well, I must hate the newest one. <laughs> the newest one is flat. I was I like the newest one. It's it's these are all tremendous. But you're coming off of some of the other stuff we drank. These are all um, tremendous. Old Forest of Birthday Bourbon this year is way better than last year's. Arguably better than the year before, but kind of on par nearly with like the 2018. It's a 12 year, it's got some I mean, spice to it. But yeah, the old Forest of Birthday I mean, Bourbon. It's it is fantastic, but these two yeah. here. Have they're different, like All you right. said, they're different. So, second place, I said I thought was MGP something. Is this a uh, is it is this a state like Remus pick or something? What do you got? Is it's it? It's Remus, fucking a Remus, yeah, nailed it. MGP, look at this shit, George Remus, straight bourbon, single barrel. That's pretty damn good. That's a, that is like drinking an orange cream right? sickle, dude, right? That's one of that's an OHLQ pick. That's that's pretty good. <clears throat> when is that one coming out? That was that's one that's been out. Oh, it's already been out. Yeah, yeah, that's all cream sickle. Your second place was which one? Second place was this. It's it's trying to remember like it was. It's so close. Oh, okay. Are you ready for so this one? So close between this one and this one, but this one is big and just like I could smoke a cigar with that one. Yeah. This is your. This is his uh, second. This is his second place. Evan Williams, twenty three. That's fantastic, but this is like my big bold smoke cigar. I'm really happy that that's your first place, and I'll tell you why after you show me um, my first place. Your first place. So first place was the root beer one, and I'm not really sure which one that one. Woodenville. Holy shit! Single barrel. Freaking Adriana called it root beer. Woodenville. This is the OG, called Candy Cane. I could see that. But man, I was getting freaking root beer on this like crazy. Yeah, like root beer has that kind of little, little minty. Minty. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Yeah, Whiskey Mountains called it. He did. Whiskey. That's a, that's Adriana. That's a she. She did. A, she's out in Utah. She did a great job on that one. All right. Uh, so your first place. You ready? Let me, let me make now sure. You, do you, you, like, sure that? you me, like that was my first place? Yeah, I do. Okay, I do. <laughs> yeah, Old Carter American Whiskey Batch it's Six. Just, I mean, it's just it's big. It's sweet and smoky. Yep. Mm. So Old Carter American Whiskey is a. Uh, mm. It's an American whiskey because it's used barrels. Uh, they have a high corn. There's some light whiskey I was there. in Kentucky, and I saw it in Kentucky, Jason. <laughs> and I tasted it there, man. Did you? Yeah, I did. Did you? Did you know? I did. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Why does an Ohio have it? That bottle might have come from another state. <laughs> Voldemort won't get me old Carter. Yeah, get that shit here. Old Carter. Of course, Old Carter. Damn, I want that. Why blinds are so fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, here. Let's see here. It's 1030. Let's, um, let's get a couple last few questions in here that, that I, not from the chat, because I think we, we, uh, we yeah, kind of we're starting through, to repeat. They're starting to repeat. Where, where so am I getting? Where am I getting a plant? Yeah, I'm taking some of the um, some of the questions I got in from my Facebook post earlier, uh, just to try to see if there's. Um, let's see. So something back to the lotteries. Um, I think we kind of talked about this with people that there people are seeing the same names over and over. Is it is it repeating? Uh, the current system outside no. of the outline lottery awards those who have the time no, and ability no, to wait no. multiple it's, one plus out. It's not like the old like call the radio station as many times as you can to win. Yeah. No, it's <clears throat> there's lots of people with the name Jason. So do you think uh, so one suggestion came up for the online lotteries mm -hmm. sign up at the beginning of the year 
Then you have to opt in for each lottery that is held. If you win, you are ineligible for the rest of the year. So if you're hoping for a BTAC or Pappy, you'd want to not opt in to every other lottery that year so you have a shot of one of those bottles. So this this is like a, a great question because <clears throat> this is a difference between like a private retailer like in Kentucky. Okay. Like for example, you go to Sazerac and they swipe your Drive your, your license. license. Yeah, you're you're out for 90 days. Well, that was the other thing that came up. Yeah. These other ones that swipe you're, your license. You're out for 90 days. Yeah. Like so, like I'm the I'm the head of a government agency. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going. I can't exclude people like that. It's got to be open access to everybody at all times. Okay. So that answers that. Um, if it was Jim's liquor agency. I got all kinds of ideas. <laughs> uh, open up distribution. Some of the small, we talk about that uh, for us rural folk. Only three of my eight surrounding counties have more than one store. Five of those single agency stores are Rite Aids. They ain't getting any. Yeah, you know, I they're feel, not getting any Weller 107. I feel your pain. Yeah, I feel your pain. I'm absolutely going to sprinkle some love your way. And that's from Mike Aruda. Yeah, so no, Mike, Mike you're right. Yep, we need to get it out there. Now, be you better get there because the people from Columbus are going to fly down there, yeah. or they're going to call their uh, cousin who lives next to you to go over there and buy it for them. So yeah. you need to. Uh, how are, are, is there any lobbying going on for shipping in Ohio? Mm-hmm. No, for shipping. No. Um, DN, we talked about this. It's basically based on um, on data, on sales data. Basically. It's where the it's not what I think. It's what the supplier he's competing for market share against his competitors, and he's looking at yeah. they're looking at their sales data. The suppliers have suppliers have a lot of power. Well, they're selling it. It's their product. Yeah, right. And like they're in business to be in business for another hundred years. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I am curious what the process is for Ohio receiving and then distributing allocated bourbons compared to other states. A lot of the time you will see other states start getting into hard to find stuff. Russell's 13, Stag Jr., Michter's Toasted as recent examples. And Ohio will be several weeks, even months behind. PA dropped. Let me finish. Yeah, yeah. Let me finish. PA dropped Russell's Reserve 13 in stores by the cases with no limit and online with a limit of two while we had to camp out in Ohio. The delivery dates are all over the board. Just because one state's getting their shipment on a date, they're, they're not consistent. Okay. So we could get it months behind another state. So that's like not, not even a thing. Uh, and Pennsylvania, if they're limiting people or they're doing their thing, you know, Pennsylvania is kind of wonky. Uh, here, when it comes in, Unless it's going into a lottery, it's going out within within weeks. Okay. It's not in my interest to hold on to inventory. I mean, the one thing that like I need to explain is Jobs Ohio bought the liquor business in 2013, which means there are bondholders like a corporation that look at what inventory are you carrying? How long is it in the warehouse? They, they, this is not a uh, government styled business. This is Deloitte audited. How long does it stay in inventory? How long is it in the warehouse? What is the ROI on, on your investment? Yeah. I mean, so like we are in the business of, Bringing suppliers in where we to make money, and the supply. It's this is a lift all boats scenario. I mean, the suppliers want to make money, the state wants to make money, and so if there's money to be made on any of these brands that you guys have ideas on, I'm game. Uh, here's a really good question. Before we tackle that, let's do our last pour here. Oh. You, did you try? You didn't try that French blends yet, did you? I tried the Polish. All right, you got to try the French one. So grab this glass. We'll do this kind of our last uh, pour here. If you guys want to get any more of your last minute questions here. Except I want to keep drinking this one. You want to drink the old Carter? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can keep drinking that, but I want you to taste that. Small, small one. I'm going to give a small one of that. 
Dude, uh, this wooden bill is fantastic. Right? Fantastic. Um. All right, so Don Ooh, Grant. This is this is. That's this is how all Blanton should be. <laughs> um. So great question from Don Lawrence. Does Jim know the differences in how OHLQ and LCBO conduct business in Canada, with the exception that the LCBO owns all See, the stores and the LCBO right. store yes, are Yes, of course I do. I was, I was up there talking. I was up there meeting with them, talking with them. I love everything they do. The yep. difference is they own all their stores. The employees in the stores are <laughs> LCBO. Wait for you. This is funny. Matthew Pion. Can we make anyone who buys a bottle of Tito's ineligible for all future lives? <laughs> I really like that idea. We, <laughs> or or crown peach. <laughs> I I can't comment because we make a lot of money on both of those. I'm sure you do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So LCBO, yeah, is like Virginia. Is like uh, a lot of places where they own the brick and mortar. The the employees in the store mm -hmm. are state employees. Um, but I like the look and feel. And you go into an LCBO store. And it looks like nothing you've seen. They look like uh, a curated, beautiful store. I've been in LCBO, yeah. So, yeah. And so the stores are very pretty. They're beautiful. Um, and they have stacks of Blantons because they sell Canadian whiskey, they don't sell bourbon. Um, let's see here. Uh, what was the other one I saw? They also, Brian, Mackie, and by, by the way, they also give favoritism. To companies and people who spend a lot of money get first choice on allocated. Yeah, and Donald could probably talk to. And that. can you can yeah. you imagine if I would do that, yeah, dude? You'd be you'd be hung. Oh, yeah, right. Um, the Master Jerome Jim, when do you see the bourbon bubble bursting, at least plateauing? Do you, do you have any thoughts on this? I do. Um, I I I just think that um, it's going to last for a while. I mean, Buffalo Trace. Heaven Hill, all uh, makers, they're 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 investing heavily for ten and twenty years into the future on bourbon, and I just think it's an American product. It's uh, got a story behind it, a history behind it. Um, it's uh, I, I don't see the bubble bur bursting for a while. I see other I see other whiskeys coming in. I see Scotch ramping back up. Uh, uh, Irish. Ramping back up. Yep. Um, and rum. I see rum Dude, making we, a run. We need four square in Ohio. Four square. And also Dorley's, which is their budget four square mm -hmm. uh, rum, which is still I delicious. I agree with you. You got to get that here. You got the hookup? For four square? No, because I don't I do not do a lot of rum. Right. I could probably. So, so I have yeah. a rum guy. Um, I have a rum guy who, like, he's a club guy. Yeah. And he's an association, rum association guy. And like I what he tells me is gold. And so he has said four four square. We're pursuing four square. Yeah. And that's that's the way it works. Is like give me good ideas. Thank you so much, women of whiskey. Sir Jason has been great, full of opinions. Women of whiskey, love you. Yes. Um, yes, on the four square. Yeah, see, Michael's a smart guy, he knows. Mm -hmm. But, uh, has the whole Heaven Hill strike influenced future purposes of Heaven Hill products nah, for the OHLQ? Nah. No, they're still pumping out. Remember, before the before the strike, they still had tons of barrels aging. So, I mean, that's going to be like a like a you know a snake eating a a pig. It's like when will that affect us? Way down the way down. So the so this is where I see the bourbon market. I think pricing is going to kill it. Um, there's too many bourbons coming out these days that are 200, $150. And while they're good, they're not a hundred dollars or $150 better than some of the stuff you could still find on the shelf, in my opinion. And the only can I just can I just say something about that? Go ahead. So the suppliers are going to price stuff at the price people will buy. It. Well, based on demand. Yeah. Right. And so... If you get if you buy it and you have remorse later, mm -hmm. that's not a brand you're going to buy again. Yeah, but so so a big point came up about this regarding the Russell's Thirteen. Mm -hmm. So Russell's Thirteen, highly regarded as one of the best bourbons that released this year, and no doubt. But for those guys that haven't had a lot of the Russell's Reserve picks, now you got to try some of this shit right out of the barrel. 
you know how good they are. Mm-hmm. If you haven't tried a lot of Russell's reserve picks and all you see is the fancy blue Russell's reserve 13 bottle with the big 13 H statement on it, you don't know how good or how much some of those Russell's reserve picks can, I'm not going to say they're better, but they can go pretty close or toe to toe with a Russell's pick. But guys are spending $400, $500 to get that Russell's 13 bottle. There's just, there's so much good bourbon out there this these days, American whiskey. And I think that's the second part of it. So you got number one pricing. Number two is oversaturation. There are so many whiskeys in the market. It's, it's hard to make headway. And I feel bad for the, for uh, like smaller distillers trying to get their product out in the market. Cause there's traction. Yeah. Cause there's so much competition. It's kind of like how beer was, right. You know, you know, 15 years right. ago when everybody was opening a brewery. Now we got distilleries opening up, you know, more and more. Um, you know, I, I want to support all the, you know, the local Ohio mm-hmm. uh, distillers because they are making incredible stuff. So you could definitely, you know, buy, buy Ohio, man. They, they are making some incredible yeah. stuff. I yes. mean, in this Ohio, Texas, I would love to see more Texas bourbons here in, uh, in Ohio as well, especially Iron Root mm-hmm. and brands like that, Balcones, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, hell, you know. Yes. Yes. What you said. <laughs> Buckner's a 200 great bourbon, but 200 is pretty damn steep for a new release, little known product. Yeah, Buckner's is a great example. Buckner's is a sourced Barton bourbon from Barton. So makers of 1792. I mean, you have Calumet 15, Calumet 14. You have tons of, of uh, brands that are sourcing from Barton, including fucking what were we talking about earlier? Costco bringing in the Kirkland stuff, the bottled and bond, the single barrel. It's all Barton. There's so much Barton in the market. Through a, a different amount of price prices. You could go as cheap as $30, $45, and you could go all the way up to a Buckner's $200 to get the same shit from the same distillery. Now, yes, the age is different, the flavor may be different, the blending of barrels may be different, but you're talking about the same distillery offering. So here's an example. Stuff from so, 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 here to there. So this is a good example <clears throat> that will like bring it all together. So Buckner's is a 13-year product Mm -hmm. single barrel barrel proof when i have a chance to buy as much of that as i can at the price they want to sell it i'm still gonna buy it why which one buckner's buckner's why because i'm the only one who got it and so if you like it or don't like it at the end of the day there's no other state that has it. Well, I know it's a supplier, but it's too expensive for but, what it is. But regardless, whether you like it or don't like it, you I'm buying it because Michigan didn't get it, Pennsylvania didn't get it, West Virginia didn't get it, they didn't get it. Nobody got it. I got it. Yeah. There's an exclusivity factor, yes. Yes, I got it. I get it. And nobody else got it. Yeah. yeah. And so that 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 applies to the scotch, the rum. Yeah, and everything else. It's, if I if I can buy it, Cameron, I wasn't the only one that hyped up Remus Five. I mean, the Bourbon Junkies loved it. A few, a lot of other reviewers loved it. It wasn't just me. I might have been the first to hype it up, but I wasn't the last. That's mm. for sure. Um, let's see here. Um, all right. Any other questions? I think we kind of covered everything. Um. Yeah, so we covered lottery. I mean, we covered we covered a lot tonight. We covered a lot of ground. Covered a lot. I of mean, y- we could teach this course at like a community college <laughs> in a in like a, a, a whole year. So, uh, so last question, last two questions of the night. What do you see as the biggest improvements to OHLQ since you joined in twenty seventeen, and what do you think are your biggest challenges going forward? So, the biggest improvement since seventeen, yeah, is. Um, the access to products that nobody else previously, like the regular guy, regular gal, um, didn't have access to single barrels, um, Pappy, Weller, access. Access is like the biggest improvement. Um, Second would be the agency stores are uh, under serious scrutiny to sell it fairly. Like Mark Brown said, sell it fairly. And I'm, and that's like my thing. 
is if you're not selling it fairly, you're on my shit list and you may lose your agency store. And so those are the two biggest improvements. Now, uh, with e-commerce, that's coming in the future. That's going to be a big challenge. And we'll see how that works. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah, e-commerce is a big one. But um, yeah, I want to thank Jim for coming on. Obviously, we knew this was going to be, you know, a pretty uh, heated discussion. It's lively. Yeah, it's a lively discussion. It's lively. It's spirited. It's spirited. That's a good way to right? put it. But I'm glad you enjoyed uh, some of the ones we had here. I love it. I love it. You know, it. Um, love again, it. please uh, leave a comment below. And oh. I will tell you that anybody out there, Michael, Michael, uh, who, who calls me comrade, knows this. I'll meet you for a drink. Yeah. I'll meet you for a drink, and we'll talk. And if you got an idea that's worth a damn... Yeah, so so um, you know, guys, for for me, this was a learning experience for me. I hope it was a learning experience for you. I'm definitely going to talk with Jim about some brands to bring into the state, uh, hopefully, and get those connections through. I love that, man. Yeah, I love it. But uh, I really, I really appreciate you guys chiming in and being passionate about the category. Um, thank you to the mods that uh, helped kind of <laughs> whittle through some of the more uh, a little bit more direct comments. Uh, those are the ones I want to see. Yeah, but no, I re but I really right. appreciate it. It was a lot. It's a it was a lot to do tonight. A lot to uh, kind of take in. Tune in next week for uh, Blend Again. Uh, Blend Again will be uh, will be the first week next week. Uh, for those of you guys, I uh, hope to see you. Some of my patrons hope to see you in Chattanooga uh, this weekend, Friday night, and also Saturday. Um, I noticed that Jason, you're not like saying the ones where they're thanking me. Uh, who's who's thanking no, you? They're thanking me all over the place. Thank you, Jim. Even though I'm not sure about the admiration for LCBO, seriously though, well done. <laughs> thanks, Jim. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Jim and Colorado. So this doesn't affect there. me, but this was fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here, Jason, Jim. Thanks for the great information, especially to the inner workings of how we get the juice. Yeah. Hopefully, some of your questions were answered. And remember, guys in Ohio, if you're bitching and moaning that you can't get something. You're going to have to talk to everyone else that's hunting the same shit you and, are. And Jason has three stores in, in New York that you can drive to. If you want. If you yeah. want to. If you want to go there, I, I could give you the addresses. They're great guys. All right. <laughs> Cheers, Jim. <laughs> As I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's people you share it with. I'll see you next time right here next week on the Master and Drum. Uh, tune in next week for the uh, kickoff of Blend Again, and I'll see you there. Take care, everybody. Thanks for chiming in tonight.